Ninety. Ninety minutes. Well, yeah, that's what I put out. Yeah, ninety minutes, but I don't think it ever. Takes. It. Well, it. Are you ready? Okay, and we're back. We'll reconvene the Kenya County Board of Commissioners meeting in a work session regarding the budget. Mr. Baker. Good afternoon. I think it's afternoon. Uh, after 12. Um, Kelsey Baker, Candioi County Administrator. Uh, I am here with uh, department heads and staff to present the 2025 budget. We have um, a presentation for you all. You have binders that were handed out in your seats. They have um, they have the, this presentation, so you have a, a paper copy. They have the spreadsheet that was included in the board packet, so you have that more in detail. Um, and they have some other information that you'll be, and then they have the full IFS 2025 preliminary budget. This is not the official certified official budget. This is our, this is actually our third working draft. There's already probably maybe um, some changes that will be made to this. So just remember in today's discussion, um, the overall departments, those are pretty much solidified. That's why we're presenting this information. But there are some other maybe quasi-government, um, health insurance that are still kind of fluid numbers within this budget um, that we haven't finalized quite yet. Minister Baker, before you go into the, the kind of the, de uh, yeah, the details, uh, give us a sh quick background of the process. How, when you start, how, how you <clears throat> process with the different departments and how you arrive at, at this preliminary audit. I was going to do that. Oh, good. I didn't see it on, on the... It's not on there. Was... Um, so, <coughs> the 2025 budget focus. So when I start meeting with each department, um, initially we have it on the agenda, the department head agenda in May, and we start scheduling those one-on-one -on -one meetings with each department in June. I like to have initial meetings with department heads just to have an idea. That's when we're just having a conversation. We don't have maybe numbers finalized by any means, but we're just having conversations. So within those conversations, I have an idea that we're gonna be doing a landfill. We're, we're looking at a cell construction. So Gary then tells me that's a big number, right? And so then we're looking at human services. And when in, in talking with each department in June and July, I look for common themes. And at your Road and Bridge work session, Mel talked about preservation and planning for the county moving forward. So that process entails meeting with department heads in June, meeting with them possibly again for a second or a third meeting in July. And really that's what it entails. It's meeting with the staff, figuring out where we wanna come and present our preliminary budget, fine tuning FTEs, how many are we, um, how many should we approve for the 2025 budget? What is being requested? Um, and what's the analysis? Is there background information of why it's being requested? Are we not meeting deadlines? Things like that. Are we looking at technology? And so all those things come into play, but really June and July, um, all the finance staff, administrator, our work and department heads are fine tuning next year's budget. Sometimes we have to wait for numbers, and so we can't put things in. Um, and really, that's the overall process. You really work on the budget from when it's approved to when it you're um, continuously. There's never a time when you're not necessarily working on a budget. And that's not just probably the administrator. That's our CFO. That's our finance staff. That's our department heads. I think this we do a really good job of being um, staying on top of the budget and staying on top of the planning moving forward. And so one of the common themes surrounding 2025 budget was planning. Um, you'll hear Scott from our IT department talk about planning with technology. We need to get ahead of the game and maybe spend a little bit more to get us up to speed on spending. Uh, planning with our levy and reserve goals. Um, later on this year, you'll hear with our financial audit for 2023, where we're coming in with our reserves. You heard from CLA last year that we have healthy reserves. The recommended amount is three to five months. We're sitting about eight and a half months. So we have overall very healthy reserves. Uh, implement new technology. Um, I've said before, we continue to analyze FTEs and that's something that our HR department is continuously doing within departments. If they're needed, if they're not, how do we look at that? 
Do we, are we understaffed? Are we overstaffed? How can we collaborate with other departments? How do we utilize technology? So this all plays a role with our planning. Department restructures, building assessments and staff development. One thing that I think as, a, as an administrator, I think is truly important is professional development. We can't expect staff to be supervisors when we have not done the work to train them and set them up for success um, to be a successful supervisor without that training. And so one thing we're looking at for 2025 and this is kind of a common theme in, again in all departments is staff development and providing professional development trainings for all of county employees. These are preliminary numbers. Um, as of right now, the proposed budget is at 48,430,000. That's the gross levy. Um, this year, our program, our county program aid increased um, overall. Last year, we received about 3.2 million. This year, we're receiving 3.3. As of right now, um, with these numbers in the budget, um, we're sitting at an eight and a half percent, which I think is a really good area to start. And so on today's agenda, we're gonna hear from the budget planning from our department heads. Um, after they're done, I'll kind of go over and re recoup everything, go over some levy amounts, where we're sitting at, where some recommendations would be. And I'm also gonna be looking for feedback from the county board. Where do you want the levy to come in at? Um, and that will help guide these final, this final month um, for putting in numbers and putting in a preliminary levy amount. Um, we'll go over wages, the levy history, and then if there's any questions. Um, and so from here, I'm gonna hand it off to Val, our county assessor. Morning, good or good afternoon. afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair <laughs> and Commissioners. I am Val Savor, County Assessor, and I'm just gonna go over some basic information here. I, a big part of our budget is um, staff, and we do have to go through a lot of training. Um, we do have, um, this is yeah. our first year of True County. Yeah. This is our first year of True County, so we no longer receive the income payments from our billing for our services. So. That was for 2024 and moving forward, that will also remain the same that we no longer receive any income from our billing. But when we did take on the 4,400 additional parcels, we did not um, add in a full time employee to replace our local assessors. Each of my staff did agree to take on the extra three, 630 parcels amongst the seven staff that are doing the on the ground work and viewing and inspecting the parcels. Um, but by doing True County, we are improving our efficiency and improving our quality of assessment. And this is a great opportunity to communicate with the taxpayers of these districts and you know sell our services and so they understand where we're going and what we're doing. We did also have a really nice article that showed up in the paper um, last Friday. So I don't know if you had an opportunity to read that also. Our staff um, is a huge investment for our office because of the um, the first three years of any staff, it takes about $10,000 to train them to get them to the three-year point where they're mandated AMA licensure. And then after that, we have about 50 to 60 hours of continuing education for each staff after that. So education is a huge piece of our budget. And uh, we have had, you know, wages and benefits is retention is a huge part um, that you know, as a county that we haven't had any change in staff and that is a very good thing for us. Um, other costs in our office are obviously the printing costs of the valuation notices that go out. That's a, a fairly large expense. And then the appraisal and tax court costs, which um, that is in the budget. And, you know, if it's needed, we use it and based on, you know, what petitions we do get over the year. And that is about what I have for you. Thank you. Um, any questions? And before I before I open it up the floor for questions or comments, um, I think I heard you say almost out of the out of the uh, get go was staff is the primary expense. I'm sure you got pencils and need equipment, but basically staff is is the major portion of your budget. Yes, that's correct. All right. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> And 
Go ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. First off, a nice article in the West Central Tribune, very well done, trying to explain a very complicated process. Yes. Thank and you. that was very well done. Um, so I don't have your budget in front of us, of course, but you're not adding any staff then? No, we're we just not. taking on all this additional on top of this. So. Correct. And you're still going to be able to try to do uh, reviews every uh, five years, all of them? Yes, we have to visit 20% of the properties. To. That's state mandated. And then when, when we get audited, I have to report what hasn't been inspected in that three year time. And we actually had three parcels on my audit last week. So, so far, so good. So, so I, I think one of the questions that's going to be begging all of us is. Your budget go up or down or stay the same as last year? It went up like 360,000. Well, going forward to the new year, it's going to stay flat. From last year, it went up. I think we got another. For the true county. Yeah, what, what, yeah and that was in the board packet. Yep. Based off each department. <coughs> and so that's also in your binder as well and also was in the board packet. Mm -hmm. And so this time, we kind of want to flow through this, uh, the directors for doing their presentations. And so I think if there are any FTEs that are added, That'll be talked about, but overall, there were many. Well, the, re the reason I asked... There weren't any FTEs added for 2025. The reason I asked the question is because in your uh, early in the presentation, you're going to ask us for um, our thoughts on is 8.5 the right number or isn't it? And so it does relate to, you know, the departments. Because we did have a significant uh, wage and benefit increase last year, which I assume comes out of the department's budgets, those increases. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for Bill? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And I agree that that article really helps if people read it, <laughs> uh, helps them to understand the process because I just got that recently about why is my evaluation so much higher than someone else's. And we have to do it one at a time. If they read the article, we can educate them several times. Yes. Thank you. All right, up next, Mark Thompson, Auditor Treasurer. We uh, hit just return here. Yeah. Get the right arrow. Perfect. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, trying to keep this here short. Uh, again, our yeah, I'm, I'm speaking not only for the auditor's office today, but also including the recorders and the license bureau departments. Um, our primary focus is service to the public and taxpayers of Candy White County. Uh, we're also responsible for the collection and distribution of property taxes to the cities, townships, and schools, and to the various funds in the county. Uh, we're responsible for paying the county's bills in a timely manner. Responsible for submitting an annual financial statement to the county residents showing the county's fiscal health. We oversee the county election processes to, to assure accurate election results. We provide recording services for property transactions, such as deeds and mortgages, and verifying with that, we verify correct legal descriptions are on those doc documents. We record vital statistics birth and death records, marriages, military discharges, and notary commissions. <clears throat> the license bureau, they provide licensing services such as vehicle registration and title transfers, automobile license tabs renewals, renewal of driver's license and DNR watercraft, snowmobiles and ATV registration and title transfers. The primary increase in, in the Auditor, recorders, and the license bureau departments is primarily um, payroll. We also continuously look at the auditors and the recorders and the license bureau staff duties and processes to find ways to be more efficient. Budget amounts outside of payroll are fairly consistent from year to year while taking on inflationary results. So we do have some, some increases, but those are minimal. Um, the budget for elections, however, will, with the implementation of newer technology advancements, 
to assure election security will see costs rising in the future, in future election cycles. We are focused on applying for any and all grants that come available to offset those rising costs associated with election equipment and software. And with that, are there any questions? Again, uh, I, I think the, the significant change in our budget is due to payroll. We do have increases in other areas, but those are, are minimal. Mr. Chair, thank you. I, I appreciate the comments because one of my major concerns is, is that the payroll or uh, salaries, employee salaries are placed on the levy. And so we know that the levy number is really being used for that as much as possible. And so I really appreciate the feedback from all the, all the people rep uh, reporting today, you know, is it primary, levy, uh, primary salaries or not? So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, I'm just looking at, so when I, when I typically look at a budget, um, it, by the way, it would be really nice to have a percent increase or decrease, so a percentage one. But I look for flags, and one of the things I saw here was one that went from six thousand license bureau from six thousand to fifty five thousand. Um, and so, to me, that's a wow. How come that's such a? And there's, I'm sure, a good uh, reason for that. Like in your uh, election year, we're going to have a lot more expense than in a non-election year. But um, which, which account number was um, that? You said. Well, I'm looking under uh, license bureau. I'm looking at the colored sheet we got. It's probably the synopsis of your. You know what, Kelsey? What's lying? Well, you. Know, it's uh, four and five. Yeah, it's four and five. Yeah. Well, you know. I can look for it later, but those are the things that, as I look at a summary of a budget, um, it's nice to see the percent change or and sure. then the flagged items and so that one jumped out at me as a big a big change and always usually an explanation for it but yeah. curious what that might be but we'll move on because of time so, oh, no i think you had a yeah. Karen, do you know what the what is the actual title of the <clears throat> license bureau's department 42 yeah, no. it just says license bureau Oh, the whole, oh, the overall. Yes. I see what you're talking yes. about. I, okay, I thought it was one particular. No, line. no, just the license bureau. The overall, sixty-six hundred to fifty-five thousand. Sure. sure. Yeah. Total. I see. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Human resources. Ms. Mort. Good afternoon, Connie Mort, uh, human resources director for Kandiyohi County. Um, mine is going to be a very short report. I don't really have a lot of increases in my budget outside of um, the two staff members that are in my department, myself and our HR generalist. Our HR generalist has also taken on uh, the additional responsibilities of payroll. Um, so she does payroll from start to finish at this time. Um, she had taken over part of it last year, and now she has taken over the entire process. So that has run very much more smoothly uh, without an increase in salary in my department. The things I'd like to uh, kind of highlight today for you is, it's not on my slide, but so far we have had 51 postings, uh, job postings in the county to date. Uh, that's in 2024. Um, and we also, I guess, again, took on payroll. Right now, um, I am doing my recruiting and purchasing recruiting software through NeoGov, and that is a line item on my budget, as you probably see there. Uh, for 2024, it will be 15,670 was my current outstanding bill in 2024, excuse me. Um, other ongoing expenditures for onboarding software starting in 26, it's, we're still looking at some options in that, so we won't be ready to implement onboarding software to make that a seamless um, self-serving process until 2026. So for 2025, we won't have an expenditure for that, but just for future planning, we will have uh, an expenditure for onboarding software if we go down that road. And that can be anywhere from one vendor is starting out at $17,000 for onboarding software for a county of our size with the amount of employees that we have. 
to anywhere to $29,000. So it depends on your vendor and what some of those um, processes look like and some of the other services that they provide. But those, again, are still in the planning stages and won't affect the 2025 budget. Uh, the expense of going paperless, I know that IT will talk a little bit about this too, but we are looking at what the indexing software and where those um, records will um, now be stored. Uh, we would like to go paperless, and that would be including our personnel files and our payroll files. If you've been in the administrative conference room, you see all of those file cabinets in there. Those are, those are all paper, and so that would be part of our process going forward. Then ongoing general and leadership training, uh, Administrator Baker kind of touched on this a little bit as well. We are having a countywide mandatory um, harassment training program here on Thursday. It will be over at um, the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, it is mandatory for all employees. If the employees cannot possibly be there physically, there will be a recorded one that will be um, they will be required to view. And so we will do that through our no before software as well. Uh, the cost of that is just over $3,000. That's gonna be pretty representative of what any other trainings that we were able to get through this provider as well. And so we're looking at, at doing some of those trainings in uh, 2025, and those are in my budget under professional services. Any other questions? Mr. Chair, thank you. Kind of a, like the last question. Uh, I see your budget is three thousand dollars under, and with the uh, salary increases and so forth, uh, how did you accomplish that? There was some. Is, is there one big item or something? That... No, there was there was some line items that historically I had not used a lot of, um, and so I was able to cut some some fees there. Um, I did reduce professional my professional. Um, services budget by a, a little bit, but it was just, it was maybe three or four line items that I was able to historically just take down a little bit. So I don't have a very big budget, so it's, it's, uh, it's a very small budget, but. Uh, over 200,000, so yes. Yes, yeah. Good job, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, any other questions? Thanks, Connie. Thank you. And I assume we're doing this in the order of what they're in our booklet. So attorney uh, Shane Baker, County attorney Shane Baker. Shane Baker, Candia County attorney. On this year's budget, we have no staff increases as far as positions, no special projects. Um, most of our Budget comes through salary, and then there's some others. A lot of that is driven sometimes by the caseload and work we're doing. Um, we had some areas go up, like professional services and books and employee travel. Um, so my presentation is a little unique in the sense is in the sense that I point out volatilities that can come up from year to year, time to time. Um, first, it's technology based. Um, from the time I've started in this office to now, it's really gone from paperless to a lot of processing by um, electronic means. So that means, as you know, a few years ago, we got a new case management software system. Unfortunately, we had a grant for 140,000 um, during COVID funding for that. But that helps drive other costs because now that's how the core operates business. They're gonna need a new, have juvenile filings by e-charging. So we need to get that, although I think I can get that under this year. But that's an example of how the tech drives costs. It can drive it because law enforcement gathers a lot of information from body cams. There's so much done that way these days. Um, legal research is electronic, so it's not a book, but it's um, Westlaw. And we do our research online of course, they have almost like large cable packages where they have all sorts of options that that's worth that's worth getting because if you just very narrow it down to say just Minnesota law, very narrow area, it'd be more prohibitive. So, um, and then evidence, making evidence for courts, you know, we may have situations where we gotta remove or redact 
certain information from our data. So we will continue to see tech kind of driving how our costs operate, which leads us into transcription. Um, as a lot of stuff's done by body cam and it's not the standard um, voice activated digital or recording equipment it makes transcriptions a little harder. Some of the equipment that um, some law enforcement agencies have used are not compatible for making transcriptions. So that cost then gets pushed down to us and we got to find providers to who do that. Not all those. There's some things the Sheriff's Office still still does and some equipment, but that they do more than what other law enforcement agencies we work with do. And of course, with that driving certain costs for needing the transcripts for use in court is we have a very diverse population in this county. So that leads into our issue number three is translations. Um, whether it's our victim services, individuals meeting with witnesses and victims on cases, and we need a translator there to provide that service, or we need transcripts translated both with Spanish and English on them to help us have the evidence we need for court. Um, but that also presents an opportunity, maybe working with human services, where we can maybe have economies of scale where how we go about getting services provided for translation. Um, training. That's been discussed already a few times, but um, we certainly try to find as many low cost items as we can, but put on by the County Attorney Association, but there are other law related subjects. For example, I have two attorneys next month and I know Sheriff's Office is sending some people to a mental health and crime um, education training because we're seeing a lot of those issues pop up over and over and over again in the community. And staff are, need to be trained to know how to, what's the new issues in the field and be up to speed on those areas. So it's not also on law related subjects, it's also on leadership. Since 2016, I've been sending staff to Vision 24 to what's now the LEAD program there. It's a leadership program. And so we, that's about $1,100 per person per year, but it's well worth it because whether they're department head or just a frontline attorney, they're, they're leaders in the areas where they're working and whether it's in court, committee meetings, what have you, you need trained staff. Um, and then that brings us to talent. Um, and that's more, that's more about turnover is what I'm trying to say there. And since last year, we've been operating an internship program. We had one intern last summer, we had one in the fall, and we had one this past summer. And that's been beneficial in two ways. We were able to fit that in our budget, but we've had such turnover, the whole legal profession, prosecuting profession has seen a lot of staffing changes, but this has helped us weather the storm. We had one attorney who left us in at the end of March, but we had already lined up an intern for the summer. So that bridged us to our new person starting just a few weeks or a week ago. Um, And that new person who started, I should mention, that's the one we had interning this past fall. So basically it's building a farm team of potential hires and whether it's for us, it worked out that way. I mean, we had some job postings where we, one time we had two applicants and that was after not getting any of the first go around. Other times it's been kind of four or three. So when you have limits on the applications you wanna, bring in as create the environment that you can get more talent coming in and that worked for us this last time. So we hope to continue that throughout the summer because you never know when you'll have someone depart for something else. Any questions? Any questions, uh, Commissioner Burke? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, are, are they paid internships? Ours are, yes. Yep. Which makes sense. I'm not saying you're. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, 
I assume so, but I just want to be clear on that. And your budget seems, you know, pretty reasonably priced. Uh, reasonably priced. That's probably not the word I want, but it seems very reasonable. Actually, and, what was unusual about that is I actually called Karen Anderson because <laughs> our salary went down. Okay. And I was one from the 2024 budget. I was wondering what, where did that come from because that made no sense yeah. in the changes. But there was fluctuations during the year. And then we had a very experienced attorney leave and replaced with uh, someone just out of law school. One more, just a follow up comment, too. Uh, interesting pr presentation. Uh, thinking of body cam cameras, uh, I always just think of the sheriff's department about, you know, they would have to wear them, they got them, but there's all these other things connected with it that your department has to go through, too, as well. And it's, it's also like just that. the volume of use these yeah. things. It's not just that they're used to them at all. It's like everything it is on body cam then when they're speaking with the witnesses or offenders or victims. A lot of times that is by body cam. It was interesting. Thank you for sharing. Other questions? <clears throat> all right. Thanks, Attorney Baker. Community corrections, Tammy Joe. I saw you leave and then I didn't see you come back. Good afternoon. I think I sent everybody into a little panic when I walked out the door. Um, I gotta move it forward. There we go. Um, so <clears throat> community corrections um, in, in your packet in the slide talks a little bit about all of the things we do in our department to address public safety. Um, as we know, um, community corrections is pretty critical in addressing long-term public safety. We have specialized units um, and we work with you know all levels of supervision from the start of a criminal justice case at a bail study all the way to when somebody comes out on a life sentence review, um, which we've had many of lately. The main drivers that you would see in our budget at this point, like everybody else's, we're looking at um, staffing costs for a variety of different things. But some of those I would like to talk about is, is we have some offsets, right? So my budget is mostly county funding. But on the other hand, I also, we have state funding because the state has some requirements for what they are supposed to fund. And then we actually have been lucky enough to be participate in two grant projects this in the next coming upcoming years that have offset some of those costs for us. Um, when we talk about state funding, we were really successful in changing some of our state funding last year, as you know, um, instead of from $800,000 to $1.4 million around dollars that we're getting annually from the state. When we approach the state at looking at re-looking at that, that's funding that we've been looking at for the last 25 years because the state wasn't following through with their requirements. Um, we were not fully successful. And so in the upcoming years, years we're going to be looking again at going back and discussing that with the state about, <clears throat> according to the workload studies and the state mandates, they are supposed to be funding us at a higher level. So we'll continue to look at those options as we go forward. In particular, you can also see a little bit in the budget, um, it's not as apparent right now, but it will be over time, is the legislature has um, eliminated our ability to charge supervision fees going forward. And so that will affect our budget. Um, and so as we kind of keep going forward on what that is, and some of our driving costs may be affected by that. So one other area we've seen an increase in costs is drug testing. Um, that's substantially increased over the last couple of years, the cost of it, um, and our state funding hasn't kept up and the supervision fees technically may go away that we may not be able to charge those back going forward. Um, another area that we're seeing an increase in cost, which is one of those areas in my department that goes up and down. Um, last year we saw an increase. Um, I expect one this year is juvenile out-of-home placements. And as we look at that, it's very difficult for us to predict what types of out-of-home placements we're going to need for juveniles in an upcoming year. So we some years are lower or higher. This year is a higher year. Hopefully maybe in the future it'll be lower. I, I have no idea how, how to know when we're going to have, be able to put what types of placements and that cost is going to be, or be from year to year. Um, I think that's pretty much, you know, upcoming training and different things of our grant. We have a grant right now that's going to provide um, quite a bit of funding over the next three years for training um, in developing programs for um, evidence-based practices and quality assurance. So that's going to be a huge focus for us going forward. Any questions for 
Ms. Lieber, go ahead. <clears throat> Commissioner Dwayne. Mr. Chair, so the juvenile our home placement, is that foster care? No, we, um, for my department, so all of our departments here in the county have some juvenile out of home placement costs, just so you're aware. So um, social services is going to have a cost that they have to pay for. The sheriff's department has a cost that they have to pay for, and community corrections has a cost that we have to pay for. And so the only individuals, juveniles, that we are looking at for those out of home placement costs are individual juveniles who are under some type of probation supervision, so they're criminal charges. Um, that have to be placed in a se setting that we're, we have to pay for. Um, so in this year's cases, the, the kids that we are looking at that we're paying for have had some pretty significant higher end charges. And that means that that increases my budget from sex offenses to um, assault charges, things that we're, we were not able to um, manage in the community. So, so the placement is like in a facility or? It's in a facility, okay. yes. All right. For example. I'm sorry, what? For example. For example, Prairie Lakes Youth Programs. But actually, the kids that we've been dealing with right now, we've actually had to have a higher level, um, even to the point where um, this year we had one at Red Wing that we had to pay for, which is, you know, the juvenile prison. So, Other questions? Can we yeah, just a couple of questions. In reference to the placement, for example, for the youth program, mm -hmm. we do get a discounted rate, so that helps. We do, with, and uh, we're very involved with programming and making sure that when we place kids at Prairie Lakes, that we have a continuation of program. So that's why um, myself and staff work very closely. Um, I'm a part of the board that we work with our facility here in our county, so that we don't have to send them out if we have a choice and can work forward with them. And then just a follow-up question, if I may. Um, you mentioned the additional state funding, which is fantastic. Uh, and you feel that's sustainable then going forward? Because otherwise, we're going to have to look at staff and levy down. So our state funding right now is um, it will go forward. Where there's an issue with it is, is the way our funding formula works. It's based on the legislature appoints a dollar amount for the state, and the state then it's divided up. And right now, what our funding formula did two years ago is it meant that it's equitable funding across the state, no matter what delivery system you have. We're still working at the state level to determine how that study or work, we have a workload study coming up. We have a variety of different things to stabilize that funding, get things situated. But I would say the funding itself is there. As populations change, it could change. So we have a set amount for community corrections funding across the state. And if um, all of a sudden our population increased on what we were supervising and another county's population decreased, we may have more additional funding coming from the state out of that pot or vice versa. So if our probation funding is based on the work we're doing at the state level. I think the question always comes up uh, to Commissioner Berg's point about sustainability is like the grants, like the ORIC grant or something. You know. Yeah, so we do have a couple grants, and we're we're very conscious of the fact of those two grants. We will monitor and keep going forward, and hopefully those will be okay. But no, the state funding is not a grant; it's it's ongoing funding, but it does have some fluctuation based on caseloads. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Emergency management is Ace here. Or are you going to handle? Um, he had to be at Kiwanis, so I will do my best based off his notes. <laughs> um, so we have on here the weather radar gap, uh, strategic planning with the rescue squad, and then overall awareness with the emergency management programs in our rescue squad. Um, the weather gap, I would say Ace Bonham, our interim director, has done a phenomenal job with this. He he sits on state committees. He's making a lot of awareness regarding this at legislative uh, levels as well. Um, I'm not gonna do the joke as good as he is, uh, but I'm gonna, I'll read it. Uh, so I left when he gave me the note. Everyone sees the radars apparently are like sewer plants or group homes. Everyone sees the benefit, but no one wants them in their backyard. And I just think that is a true ace fashion. And so I, um, I hope I did that justice. Um, but there, there's a whole lot of benefit for having this, um, and there shouldn't be a cost for the county other than his time. He has done a lot of work going to different counties and educating other county boards regarding what the weather gap means, and not just county boards, but legislators as well. 
Um, emergency management also oversees the rescue squad. We just had our 75th anniversary. Um, Ace and I are personally proud of the work and the commitment that this group has. Uh, sometimes they go underlooked many times, but the, the dedication that these members have to our rescue squad um, is beyond words. I mean, some of them are third generation rescue squad members, which is really telling of the commitment and time and the dedication that they have to overall Candy Eye County. So some of the work that we're going to be doing is looking at some strategic planning and priorities and making sure that everyone's on, on the same page with how we want this department to move forward. Um, what do the staffing levels look like? What does our equipment look like? And really get uh, gauge where all the members are coming in at. And then finally, awareness is a huge part of emergency management. Um, from tabletop exercises to evaluating our facilities to educating our own employees to educating the public. Um, one of the things that is a project that we've been working on is the school reunification program. And then you'll um, that's something you'll hear about at our September 3rd board meeting. ACE will provide an update on that. And so it's not just awareness to be proactive, but we also have to be reactive and going through those exercises and creating the awareness and the response times regarding the train derailment or windstorms or tornadoes. And so just creating awareness about that is one thing is a goal of ours is that we want to improve on moving, moving forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Going back to the uh, radar again, uh, any guesstimate when that might come to fruition? I don't. I know Ace is waiting on a few different things, but like I said, he'll provide more of an update to the county board at the September 3rd meeting. I I'm shocked that there is such a thing, but it really makes sense. Now every storm comes, I'm watching it, and all of a sudden there's no storm, and all of a sudden, boom, there's a storm. Where was that before, you know? Yeah. So it's very much needed, and I, I appreciate them working on that and moving, trying to move forward as fast as, as we can to fill in that gap. And also this really comment about the rescue squad, what a good job they're doing, and mm -hmm. we're trying to meet their needs as much as possible. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm having a hard time finding out where he is I on this here. It. it doesn't say emergency. Civil mode. defense. Civil defense. Okay. Thank you. That's right. Actually went down a little. Yeah, I'm making a, I'm making a couple notes because some things are combined. And yep. so if I knew what was combined, it would be helpful too. All right. Um, oh. Environmental services, Mr. Gear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gary Gear, Environmental Services Director here uh, this afternoon, and bringing the uh, Environmental Services budget before you. Uh, and just kind of you know, touch on the main drivers and the bigger items uh, for budget 2025. And uh, the landfill cell construction will be, is the significant driver this year. Uh, it's going to be completed, uh, which will include development of 295,000 cubic yards of waste disposal capacity and revenue generation through 2029. And uh, potentially further, if permit modifications, which I'll touch on in a minute, uh, allow for vertical expansion of the MSW disposal area. Uh, it involves uh, placing 15,000 cubic yards of a clay material liner and 3.4 acres of geomembrane liner. Uh, leachate collection pump piping granular material as the barrier on top of the, uh, the geomembrane uh, liner and then frost protection MSW. Uh, it, it, that's one piece. You, you, you when as soon as you build a cell and you got the piping under there and you're collecting the leachate, we can't have it freeze uh, immediately in November. So, uh, we're you, a lot of folks don't realize it, but that we're we're moving. We we're, we're considering the fact that we're getting close to capacity with our current space available with MSW, but then as we develop the new cell, we actually push four to eight feet of MSW on top of that new cell that we'll be building in 2025. And then we're technically backing up as we accept new waste then because we have space available where that just came from. But that provides us our frost protection for the leachate collection system underneath the cell construction. So a lot of moving parts to building a cell and a lot of work involved in doing that. Uh, additionally, there'll be ultimate development road uh, improvements within the landfill, uh, stormwater conveyances and basins, um, additional litter fence uh, that we built two years ago that's been a significant improvement for us along the road, and we will capture just the, the approximately 700 feet going north yet, and that would 
complete that uh, piece for the litter retention. Uh, the permit modifications for the landfill, we do uh, are a permitted fill facility through the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Uh, we will renew in 2025, which would include a uh, request for additional vertical expansion of the MSW disposal area. Uh, we're looking at between 20 and 30 feet of additional height and changing our slopes from what has been historically five to one to three to one. And what we're doing, of course, is selling space. And if we can create more volume and more space, we can extend the life of the landfill. So uh, that is our desire as we move forward in re-permitting because <coughs> our ultimate capacity is approved through that permit. So then uh, the way to gain that space is through height and slope. So that is part of the plan for 2025. And then in addition, uh, leachate recirculation, uh, we would be proposing, boy, I can't keep glasses on or glasses <laughs> off. Um, uh, so recirculation of the leachate, uh, which uh, historically the only option has been, well, historically we have trucked our leachate through the last number of years we've been using our leachate treatment facility. Uh, that has been operational uh, throughout this whole year now. So we're gaining some traction and success with that. Uh, the, the idea with the recirculation of the leachate and getting it permitted to be able to do that would be that any downtime or uh, occurrences when we're not able to treat the leachate, we can recirculate it through the cell and not have to truck off site. So again, we're uh, a little extra uh, liquid in the, the MSW uh, in our eyes will aid in compaction of the MSW, which again is what we're after because the more we can come back, the more space we can uh, maintain to uh, continue to uh, add disposal within that. So, uh, and this, and I guess I mentioned that no, no trucking would be the goal with that too. That's kind of been the behind the scenes goal, but I think we've learned through our DRP process with the leachate treatment system that it isn't the magic bullet that it, there will just never be any trucking. There is going to be issues in timing uh, when things are either broke down or not functioning for some reason. So, being able to research it will be a big plus for us in our permit to be able to uh, in group compaction. Go ahead, uh, Commission. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this in a separate, well, it's kind of part of the budget, I suppose. Um, with all the rain this year, that's probably been a huge issue with uh, it, it. It hasn't been as bad as maybe uh, past uh, situations. We've done, I believe, a little better job of stormwater management on the facility. We used to. Uh, went in its, it depends on the timing of the cell as well. So see, we have a lot of uh, MSW in the current cell, so we have absorption. So we're a little bit delayed. There's a delay in leachate coming through. It doesn't rain to, rain today and we see it tomorrow. So it, it's a little bit of a bounce with that, of knowing that exactly. But we've also done a better job of stormwater management. We used to have a fair amount of runoff into our cells okay. that we've really worked to not allow to happen anymore. So uh, we are you're, you're trying to just treat leachate and not additional water. So that's kind of what I just had said to uh, the stormwater uh, conveyances and basins. If we can <clears throat> develop and work those as best as possible. It, in, it helps our chances to keep the additional rainwater. I, and I understand rainwater right on the cell, yes, but. So it's pretty much just the cell then that you're. Yes, correct. Okay. So that's the big gain or the plus there. Mr. Chair, yeah. thank you. So what I hear you saying, the leachate system is working fairly well this year. It's, it has been operational. We, we still are desiring a higher percentage of permeate, which is the clean water going out of it, and the concentrate, which is what we also recirculate into our cell. But we're, we're operational, which has been a, you know, it's been two steps forward, one step back for a number of years, of course, but we're, it's going well this year. And one other follow-up question. Any uh, chemicals, new chemicals that we have to be aware of, that you have to be aware of uh, to, to test for? Um, I, would, I, would, I would say not, not anything new that we're, uh, we are. And we had implemented PFAS testing last year already, too. That's just kind of the, the hot uh, front burner one that we're watching for. But we had already been monitoring for that and then testing for, a, a, of course, a laundry list of chemicals through our sampling that we do. And uh, nothing that we, we are not finding anything in our monitoring wells that is coming from any cell that we've constructed. So we're, we're, we're pleased with our 
reporting results. Good, thank you. Okay, I'll keep trying to go here. Um, oh, and well, I do want to add one other piece with the DR, the DRP that we're under, and you know, we're at some point we need to get that pulled into our facility permit as well. Um, and it's good to know that we're we're getting consistent production out of our treatment system. Do we wish it was it would have been working better sooner? Have we invested a lot? Yes, we have. But all MSW landfills have just been informed that they need to have a DRP and a way to treat their leachate within five years. So I credit the board and past administration and staff that uh, worked uh, stuff you next out to introduce and uh, try a leachate treatment facility uh, because we are on the front side of a, a lot of of a path that's coming for everybody else. So uh, at least we're, I believe, in a good position for what we have done and uh, moving forward. Jumping to equipment uh, as another budget driver for 2025, uh, a new track type dozer. The, the current one we have is on the five-year program that we've uh, been under for uh, the years that I've been around. So that's a, it's a, a replacement, but it is a significant item. Looking to go to a full-on dozer instead of a crawler. Uh, a crawler is kind of a hybrid between uh, payloader and, and dozer and the dozer as we're phasing, which the crawler was used primarily in our demolition cell and that phasing out will, uh, a true dozer will be a better piece of equipment for landfill operators, uh, primarily in the MSW cell. And uh, again, a big plus for providing the compaction that we're looking for. Um, that's it for the landfill. Just a <clears throat> quick highlight on planning and zoning then as well. Salaries are the main driver there. Uh, number of permits that we've averaged are just over 600 over the last five years. Uh, average fees that we've uh, received, 357,000. Uh, there's been 34 new homes permitted this year. So those are just some of the things. That, again, salaries main driver, uh, the SSTS, low interest loan, that's a septic system program. It's been a great program over the years. A lot of money has been uh, loaned at a low interest rate through that. Um, and in recent years, we've got the income-based grant program available as well. Uh, and that in conjunction with the Great Glacial Lake Sewer District, you know, we, we're covering a lot of properties to have good wastewater treatment and improvements in the long term. So good things going on there. So that is all I have for environmental services, unless there was further, I guess, I got some questions midstream, but if there's anything further. I'll just make a couple of comments. Um, you know, <clears throat> technology is defined as not just equipment, but ideas too. And uh, really have to commend you for, I mean, we, the Glacier Lake Sewer District does the same thing. We don't want stormwater being treated in the sewer district because it's expensive. And keeping that stormwater out is, uh, I think, a, a great, uh, move forward and then the recirculation yeah. you know instead of hauling it away pump it back on and give it a few more days buy some time as it recir or repercolates i think yeah. that was also a good idea a couple of big goals for us through the new permit correct thank you all right thank you all mm -hmm. andy you haven't had enough of us yet nope. oh. <laughs> look at me you're yeah. back for more punishment yeah let me hit you okay andy after andy is in a <laughs> <laughs> I'll make your short and sweet, gentlemen. Um, so most of my operational budgets, I was able to uh, have no changes with the exception of some of the larger ones. And those driving factors, of course, are wages and benefits. Um, I did have to raise utilities on three, four of those budgets. Um, I wish I would have had a little foresight that uh, Wilmer was going to start charging us a uh, fee for natural gas now, too. Otherwise, I would have raised up my budget a little bit more. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Mr. Chair, can I ask? Excuse me. Go ahead. Where are you on the budget here? I mean, what? What's, oh, I, uh, what's not on there? What's the name of it? <laughs> oh, I have. Okay, all over? Okay. I uh, Yeah. Okay. I, Overall, it's like 15. Oh, okay. All right. That's why I can't find <laughs> So there's nothing big on any of my operational budget, which would be fund one, 
uh, Fund 15 and Fund 16. Um, the major changes will be to Fund 13, which is our building fund. Um, so if, if you look at each of the numbers on the 2025 budget, those numbers reflect the capital improvement plan. So how much will be spent in each one of those facilities? Um, to go over uh, next year's capital improvement plan, um, we have uh, the attorney's office, we have the elevator. That's gonna be a big, big line item. I did hire an engineering firm to write the specs for that. Is that not, nothing I can do? Um, library, we have a proposed uh, roof. Um, the main air conditioner, which is original to the building, so 25 years old. Um, we have some, a split unit to put in, in the, uh, the IT room, um, just some VFDs for controlling the fans. Um, county office building, we have the elevator, that should be right around $95,000. Um, public works would be replacing the majority of the in-floor heat boilers. Um, they've come to their end of the life. Um, we had to replace one last year already. <coughs> and the plan is for uh, in-house staff to paint the facility next year. And law enforcement center, um, we have uh, building water pumps and drives. Um, we do not have enough water pressure out here. So we have to have supplemental pumps to keep the water pressure up in the building, not only for showers and stuff, but for mainly the fire system to keep the code. Um, they're failing. We've had to replace parts on the one over there now and just the part was $7,000. Um, so we got that coming down the pipe. Uh, maintenance garage um, that's coming on 20 years old. Um, we're looking at the boilers over there, and that's about it. But you know, that comes to a price tag of $960,000 amongst all facilities. And then, you know, I, I'm going to calculate another 5% on top of that for inflation. Um, so that's another $48,000. So we're, we're nearing a million dollars for the capital improvement plan next year. And, and what have we been putting away for that? 1.3. So we're staying ahead of it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions for Andy? What I'm going to suggest, if I think this is getting a little long. For those of you who have reported, I think it's safe for you if you want to leave, you're free to leave. And, and uh, we're not going to ask any more questions afterwards. We'll, we'll get a, our answers another time. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Andy. Scott. Good afternoon. Try to breeze through this a little bit. Um, for you. So we've got a few priorities for this. For the record, uh, uh, Scott Hovlin, IT director. Um, so we've got a few priorities for this year. Uh, as a whole, we tried to stay pretty close to where we were. Um, it's up a bit. Um, Cybersecurity has been a big thing in the last couple of years. Um, so, and as you know, we've had a couple of recent events that have thrown us a curve. Um, we've invested a lot of money. And ironically, the things we invested money on were things that had issues. So oh. sometimes you can't win. Um, but those uh, those tools that we've implemented are uh, because of regulation from the FBI, the BCA. Um, and so we've purchased some things that we've been really benefited from what you've given us through ARPA funds. Uh, we're going to continue those, and next year I think we'll be okay. Uh, be prepared for some other numbers if we don't have other grants to pay for those in coming years. Um, we've been working with modern, 
modernization of different IT systems throughout the county. A uh, number of our departments have brought up that IT has been involved with, uh, whether we're looking at HR uh, scanning or um, bringing some of our on-prem uh, applications to the cloud. Uh, we're looking at various things. And with all of those bring questions, concerns, and, uh, stress. So, um, and money. <laughs> so um, there, as we've seen, there's, there's money invested here to have it on-prem. There are some benefits to having it in the cloud, um, but sometimes that costs us a little more money too, to do it that way. Um, we've done some pilot projects with Kandrai County and several counties throughout the state to try to be ahead of some of these initiatives. And that's been beneficial. We're trying to get some group purchasing so that we can drive down pricing. That's what we did with our SIM project that we have implemented. Uh, without that big group, we would have paid significantly more. Uh, operational expenditures. Um, that's, that's where we're kind of getting hit. Um, we've got licensing that unfortunately, uh, Microsoft doesn't ever charge us less than they did the year before. Our backup software, our, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, that's where, you know, I, I guess I, as we were looking at budgets, I could not have a level budget there because of an uncontrolled um, fee. Uh, we we're looking at this next year to probably move to Office 365 for the whole county. Uh, what that looks like is probably about $100,000. And we can take care of that through some of our ARPA funds, but that's not a one-time cost. That is an ongoing cost. From, and I think I've talked to a few of you and he said, hey, we just gave you money for this. Like, well, guess what? Here, here's what's, once we go and put our foot in the water, um, we're gonna invest that. Um, we're always trying to keep up to date with our, our servers, our PCs. You know, we've got a load on a truck right now for the county office building. So we're always trying to keep our staff working to keep our the rest of the county staff up to date so we're not uh, fighting old equipment. Um, and then security within that infrastructure too. We've invested a lot of money there to, again, back to the cybersecurity. What do we have to do to keep Kandua County functioning? Um, some of the other things we've done this year and we're gonna continue to do next year, we've done some innovation with our technology, uh, including as you're looking here at your uh, consoles in front of you, uh, that was one of our big in investments through ARPA dollars. Uh, we're, this next year we'll be looking at boardrooms and things like that to make them more usable for county staff. Uh, and then the last would be personnel. Uh, as we know, that's not something that we, with our salary changes, that's been a, a bigger amount, um, but that's what we can do. We're gonna look at some different on-call um, benefits for our staff. All right now it's kind of a comp time looking for one. And so we're gonna look at that through this next year. Um, again, I don't know that that'll be a big expenditure in the future, but down the line. So um, with this, like I said, we have greatly benefited from the decisions that have been made to give the, the IT department uh, financial assistance through grants. Uh, we're gonna invest those things to do the right thing. However, um, in coming years, we're gonna be asking for more money or more, or we're gonna be continually looking for grants to fund those things. Sure, keep looking for grants. What's up? Keep looking for grants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that's just it. I think as a county, um, I think we're always looking for that, right? And, and who is that and who's got time to do it? <laughs> So, um, yes, um, so um, with that, like I said, we're trying to look at long-term solutions, not one-time solutions, one-time payments, and that's where we're at as far as technology for the county. Any questions? Questions for Corky? Uh, there's a comment and a question. Um, have you seen a lot of changes in IT over the years? Mm -hmm. I can remember back uh, when Jay helped me with a floppy disk. It's a long, long way since then, hasn't it been? And uh, you got a lot of experience. I appreciate that, and you're doing a good job in, in that aspect. Um, w one thing I hear from some of my meetings uh, is that we need a, a room, you know, with a good uh, 
uh, monitor, you know, for Zoom meetings and things like that. Is there a plan to set up one of the, uh, the meeting rooms? In and I this think building? that's what we'll start to see with, as I talk about with our board, um, our different conference rooms. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I'm sure again, So you can walk in with then, your laptop, connect to the screen. And then you just, that'd be really nice. Yeah. Needed. I think, you know, and as we see in this building, there are not enough, there's not enough spaces to have big meetings like that. Uh, yeah. So. But even the smaller rooms we do have, we still get, you know, 10, 15, 20 people, right. some of them. So right. be nice to have one there. Thank you. All right. Other questions? Thank you, Scott. Appreciate that. I'm going to pause for just a second here. We've got, so the agenda initially said uh, 90 minutes for this. And we just started at 11. We're approaching. No, we started at noon. No. This was noon. No, but we scheduled to start at about 11. Oh. So now we're quite a bit over. Is there any way we could uh, take five minutes? Well, I'm just wondering if we could. Uh, do the rest of this at the next meeting. I know we've already had staff waiting around, or Maybe we power through it because no, we might have another. I think. Okay, I just wanted to ask. All right, airline. Good afternoon, Caroline Kahn, uh, Health and Human Services Director. I know you guys have IFS reports. Um, but Carol puts together these really nice, easy to follow. Would you like a copy of those? Um, sure. I can pass those around. Love the summary. It makes it a little easier to walk through. Um, oh, I moved over. He's the AT director. <laughs> He's prepped and ready for me. So. Uh, today, I'd like to just talk to you a little bit about our themes for the upcoming year and how we're really going to be focusing on optimizing our synergy. Uh, we've been a health and human services department for, I believe, since Ann Steen was our director when we made that transition. Um, and we're still continuing to, to ways, look for ways that we can leverage both sides of our department to, to really improve the work that we do. Um, so we're going to continue to focus on right-sizing our initiatives and optimizing our resources to streamline some of our processes and efficiencies. Some of those things that you know Scott talked about in partnering with IT, uh, we're looking at moving forward with a, a tech program that allows like our text messages, instead of typing them out, we can just cut, click and drag uh, and still meet some of the requirements that we need, but really de decrease some of that staff burden on areas such as that, as well as things like what we've talked about uh, with our caseworks and e-signature and, and finding ways that we can use the systems that we have or other systems to improve the way that we work. Um, continue to look at our organizational frameworks and team design. So we've recently had some changes within our public health department under foundational public health responsibilities. And instead of adding staff, really did an assessment of capacity within our staff uh, to see areas in which we could grow. We've all identified some other areas of opportunity where we were able to ask um, our human services side, what are areas that you need? Uh, so we'll be moving forward with looking to uh, bring forward an opportunity to do jail parenting programming and how can we work um, for needs on one side and benefit from the other and work together to accomplish some of those goals. And that kind of still rolls into like our, our culture of shared services and team design and how can public health and human services continue to, to partner and, and move forward for things such as parenting, education, and others. Um, and they, again, continue to identify um, and our strategies to boost productivity for our and satisfaction overall for our staff and our clients. Um, with that comes th some changes. As you can see, if we'll, I believe the public health one is on top. Um, Carol has done a, a remarkable job putting this in a nice, easy format for us. So just to call out some areas in our revenues, I really want to highlight that foundational public health dollars, uh, it was really a strategy from the state to make sure that this doesn't decrease our levy. Um, that's very important. So you're going to see a decrease um, in Candy Ohio County's public health re request on a levy, but that's because our, our team is doing such a great job and Carol's team on the finance side is doing a great job on revenue recapture and providing re revenue delivered services. Um, so that the reason you're witnessing that is not because of this, this, these foundational dollars, but it is a direct result of the revenues that we are receiving for the services that we're delivering to the community. Um, we continue, like everybody else, to look for grants and utilize grants within the work that we do to, to reach our goals. Most of our um, 
change that you'll see, I know that it's probably jumping out, so I'm just going to address the elephant, is that increase in our health promotion line. We've seen decreases of, in availability for funding to support areas like CTC, and our public health has done a really good stewardly job. Um, and with the, that increase in revenue, uh, we were still able to modify some opportunities to still achieve those goals for like our child and teen checkup and our other health promotion goals. Um, and so we chose to allocate, putting in a few more dollars to maintain that consistency in our, our community impact. Um, while still moving forward with a decrease on that levy request. Again, if you move over to our human services side, you'll see uh, modifications. Some of our public's uh, purchase of civil or, or recoveries, uh, there was a change in parental fees uh, from a legislative standpoint. Uh, so we are no longer able to collect those and that is where you'll see a majority of that decrease under our recoveries line. Um, other revenues, we continue to move forward and find ways that we can leverage the revenue opportunities that we can get under our time study and um, other areas. Uh, Carol's team does a really good job helping educate our staff, especially with staff turnover, to make sure we're optimizing every opportunity to receive that state and federal funding for the work that we do. Um, and then if you move down, you will notice uh, a shift in, in personnel. That is our main, about 64% of our budget does go to personnel. So that is, um, able, it's a, it's a pretty hefty portion, but I think it's really stable. If you look at the, the budget that you're looking at from 2024, didn't yet allocate for those increases and we're having more staff participate in our health insurance. Um, so that's why you're noticing that increase there. But overall, I'm really impressed with the way that Candy Ohio County has been able to keep their per capita cost of uh, levy dollars spent on this human services delivery. If you look at that uh, number of our per capita cost is pretty in line from 2020. And if you look at the statewide per capita cost, that they had a pretty significant increase. So I think it really goes to the testament of the work that Candy Ohio County has been doing to maintain a stable service delivery while um, increased demands and regulations and changes on the work that we do. So I'd just like to highlight that as well. Thank you. Yeah, per capita cost. Um, we're staying pr uh, pretty reasonable there. That's good. Mm -hmm. Still a lot of money per capita it's, it's, that when you think about the uh, services. Uh, but uh, at least we're staying pretty much in, uh, as we go along. Um, I noticed also on here that the ARPA funds, you know, they're running out now. Yep. We hired the staff with them. And I'm assuming then for the health or the, for the human services levy increasing by 463000 um, that's mainly uh, levy dollars for salaries for these positions, having to pick up the full amount for that as well. And is there any new hires in this position? No, at this point. Going forward now? We are still analyzing some needs, but at this point, the budget we're putting forward doesn't have the FTEs. Um, we will always find needs and desires, but we still have to remain stewardly. Right. So we're going to continue to move forward with opportunities to see what we can do to meet that need. Uh, without the additional increase of staffing. At this and point. so the, the levy increases are mainly salaries and that we're trying to... Yep, and then the that. offset of that uh, minor recovery reduction. So that's kind of, if you yes. look on that differential side, that's you'll... The same, yep, yes. yep, so... Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? Thank you. I have a few questions, but I'll, I'll ask them at a different time because in the interest of time. Yep. Mr. Odens. Fair members of the board, Mel Odens, Public Works Director. Um, on your screen is, I've kind of done it in four, four major areas. This is the proactive side of my budget. Uh, the reactive side is the maintenance side, which is about three and a half million. Um, I did list that out because it's kind of what people expect. This is what um, we, or they, they expect us to do forward thinking. They kind of assume that we're doing maintenance. With that note, um, the other thing that I don't have, just for the record, is the glacial lakes will be coming up in October, November. That's an enterprise fund, so that's not included in here. And I think that's, oh, and then, so let, let's just start out with capital equipment. We have $778,800 of capital equipment we're looking at, and we're recommending that we split um, that between levy dollars and buffer fund dollars, we did have about 120,000 of that 
is eligible for the buffer fund, which would be the skid steer, trailer, <coughs> soil conditioner, and stump grinder. So I, as, a, as kind of a, the administrator and I were thinking like, if this is a, you know, like a head nod direction we can go, this will help also the, the levy reduction because our levy has remained the same for public works 4.7. And so this would be one way that we have a revenue source or an area that we could use, which is eligible cost. Now this will leave at the end of the, at the end of 25, we'll still have a balance of about $700,000 in that account. So with these purchases. So, so you, did I hear you looking for some sort well, of, well, to me, it just makes, just, it just makes we were sense. Just, we were just thinking like, because it is a direct impact to the levy. It's not, you don't need to make a vote, but I'm just, if the general direction, we, we haven't done a lot of purchases with the buffer count, but we do and we can. And I guess the point I would make is that <clears throat> the money is there, continues to come in. There's no sense in sitting on it. So if we have eligible purchases and eligible uses for that, we may as well use it otherwise. And granted, we have pretty good interest rates right now, but money is there to use. And on that note, one of the things that we were looking at buying in 2024 was the we're buying the skids here to trailer. Right now, Austin uses just a pickup and then we borrow a one ton from Public Works and we would just um, maybe get rid of his pickup and go with the 250 or three quarters so he could pull it. So with that being said, um, we would like, there's no impact to the 24 budget, but maybe to purchase that now is with the $24, it's still, that was all calculated into this whole um, balance of the buffer. Anyway, you can think about that, um, but we would like to maybe proceed with that. Um, as the as administrator said, you know, this is for us kind of a planning and preservation year, um, but I do want to highlight four projects that we're going to be doing for safety projects. One is we're going to do the grade separation over the Burlington Northern Railroad tracks, the, the $9.6 million grade separation. Um, we're, we're going to be doing uh, 12 intersections with LED stop signs. We're going to throw in some, or two of those sites will have rumble strips. So that's a big change. We're going to have, I believe, uh, about 35 or so intersections with, with LED stop signs now. Uh, that Because the state did an overbuild last year. Um, we're going to be doing our ground and what reflective again this year through the federal dollars. And then um, we do a off-road trail project every year. Um, and we're doing um, one on Lake Avenue South and then one up from kind of the Bible camp northerly on our County Road 95. Uh, construction is 25.2 million. That's uh, 31 miles of paving and overlay. There is no construction in there but we are gonna be doing um, some full depth reclamation, which is, we have the grade, we're gonna go all the way down into the gravel and then build it back up. So it's quasi the same as construction. You'll have the same quality as a new constructed road. And then the last um, thing I wanna point out, uh, maybe I'll go back to construction. Some of the notable projects we're gonna be doing next year is the Tri-County Road. We're gonna be doing the College Road. Um, from five over to 41. Um, we'll be doing the bridge over here and then um, 7th Street in Wilmer, or our County Road 41 from the fairgrounds up to Wilmer Avenue. So those are kind of like your flagship, bigger projects that you might see, if you will. Go ahead. So the Tri County Road, how many miles are we talking about? Is it the whole? Is it, it would be all of our county. We would start. We're 10 and two split and do the 10 and two little dance there and go all the way up. Then go all the way north to a mile north, I think of 102. I think it's five miles. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And we would, what we're looking at doing is an FDR and paving grass line to grass line. So it would be almost, a, it, would, it would be the identical same road as eight, completely in north. It would be the exact, that look would be what that would be up to. Is it, it's not totally rebuilt? Nope, nope, nope. You can tell we love construction. Um, the full depth reclamation uh, 
on roads used for Highway 23 detours. Yeah, that but people are going to be very happy about that. Is that covered in the cost of the no. uh, no. uh, four lane project no. by the state? No, we don't get no, <laughs> um, not even close. Like it, that's just a token of feel good. What you have to do to get roads yeah the interagency cooperation we use there. Incidentally, you know we do use. Trunk highways is our detours as well, and we don't pay them anything. So, um, uh, on the budget side, our revenue, um, we have 12 revenue sources that we fund this program with. I listed the top six, and as far as budget goes, our levy has not changed. So, 4.7 million. Our budget changes because our budget fluctuates with construction revenue. So, it went from a little over 30 million last year to 32.16. Um, with that, I believe that was. And that 32 right includes uh, the bridge. Yep. So in another year, it might be 6 million for the interchange at New London. Or yep, yep. So uh, yeah, that that's why this this budget is a little hard. To, when, when we show it in the budget report, because if you get a big grant, if you don't get a big grant, if you, it, it goes up and down quite a bit. All right, any other questions? No, good. Thank you. Sheriff. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Corky requested a three minute break and I am going to set a timer on that. <laughs> you used to have a little thing with fan in I'm gonna set it, well, no, that was a 15 minute one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
We reconvene the Kennedy Lake County Board of Commissioners. Chair Tullison. Welcome. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board, Eric Tullison, Kennewick County Sheriff. Um, well, I'm here to just give you some highlights for or low lights, however you want to look at it for 2025. Um, as far as the sheriff's office is concerned, when you're looking at your document, um, there's three main areas. Of course, the uh, county jail falls under my budget, uh, dispatch center, and then there's one listed as sheriff. And then also boat and water safety and and uh, snowmobile patrol and safe and sober, but those are small little things that are just taken care of by grants and stuff. So for your reference, but one of the biggest things that will probably happen in 2025 will be the purchase of a computer aided dispatch, um, records management, corrections management, <coughs> civil process and law enforcement mobile software. Currently we're running LETG, which we purchased for a really, really low price a long time ago. Um, and, uh, we're sort of the company is sort of ending it, so to speak, through lack of support. And there's a few aspects of it that don't currently work. Um, we did kind of scramble in 2000 when I first took office in 2023. All of the uh, law enforcement agencies that were using LATG were under the uh, assumption, turned out to be false information, that LATG was just going to end of life at a certain time and not support its software, which would, of course, essentially cripple us. Uh, that didn't happen, but they have really backed off on their support. So a lot of agencies are looking at different, <coughs> different products that are out there. Um, some agencies have already gone. Stearns County has gone to a, uh, another replacement um, called Tyler Technologies. Um, <coughs> we're looking really hard at some of these vendors right now. And we're also looking at the possibility of maybe being a host site for the outlying uh, agencies that surround us. That's what Stearns County is actually doing with Benton County and a few other agencies up there. So there may be some Senate appropriation, appropriation funding available for that type of scenario, but we're still kind of exploring that. So uh, the next item would be, uh, we're gonna trade in if it's worth anything. We still have the old style ATV. We haven't upgraded to a side-by-side. -side, so um, we've been kind of on our wish list. So we're looking at uh, working with some of the local businesses on that as well. Um, our staffing, one thing we're gonna try to explore, we haven't posted for it yet, but we will be shortly uh, part-time positions in the jail that will be correctional officers that will be assigned to court security. That is in response to more in-person uh, court hearings. So things are moving away from virtual. When we were having virtual hearings, the correctional officer that was escorting the person to their hearing wasn't technically leaving the facility. So it didn't really affect staffing levels. But when they leave and go to the courthouse, that affects the staffing levels, which are based on the inmate population, that kind of thing. So now that we're doing more in person, so we're gonna explore, you know, the word is that maybe part-time position will be more you know, desirable for some people out there, we'll see. So, and then also a medical secretary to assist with the uh, medical records within the jail, which we're required to maintain. And Cooper, who's coming up on 11 years of service, um, can be our German Shepherd K9, will be retiring at the end of this year. Uh, so the intent then would be to purchase another uh, K9 uh, in 2025. But for that, we, we still have uh, um, donations that we had received from from Dunnick and from the Wilmer Area Community Foundation to fund that. So, okay. any questions? Nice and brief. Question for the chair. I, so, of the, it's a significant increase of nearly 10%. What portion of that, maybe it's a better question for Administrator Baker, what portion of that would be levy dollars? I think it's all levy, isn't it? Well, is there any, do we use any of the funds? Because the, the jail is one of our um, areas where we do have um, revenue positive revenue, uh, can we offset that with that revenue um, in, instead of using levies, levy dollars? I would recommend that, um, but the sheriff's budget is in the general fund. So therefore, yes, it is all levy dollars. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, other questions? So all this, 
Yes. So all the software increases of a million plus, is that levy then too, or you're saying? That's what I mean. That, that's so, well, right. Yeah, I can explain that further. So yeah. that will come from, you know, we, a significant portion of that can come from our 901 fund uh, because, you know, the CAD system, for instance, which is a bulk of this, you know, we could, it, it's a it's a pretty comprehensive software system. It's everything from the the mobile system that your squad cars are running that the, each officer is using. It's the uh, management records management system and the jail software for intaking, booking in inmates, retaining uh, uh, records of them. Uh, it's uh, so that's the corrections management, the civil process software, and then of course our records management itself because we hate we keep all of the uh, public safety records for the county. And so, but yeah, so areas of that software that directly relate to the piece that was a dispatch center, then that can come out of the 901 fund. Then, of course, you know, other agencies that contribute will be a part of that as well, because Wilmer uh, will be on the same system as us as well, more likely. Okay. So all these that you listed here are not, weren't budgeted items last year, right? No, they were not. So really... It's more than the four hundred sixty thousand dollar or whatever forty. I lost number. Whatever the uh, ten percent increase, this is on top of that, correct? Yes. Yeah. What fund would that? I'm sorry, I missed your question. So um, I lost the uh, the number, but roughly ten percent increase. The question I ask about the uh, levy, if that all comes out of the levy, and the answer was yes. But then, um, then there's this. We'll call it a million dollars for the mobile software uh, uh, up replacement, thirty-three thousand and one hundred twenty thousand. So roughly, one point two million dollars. Does that also come out of levy, or where does that come from? Well, the medical secretary position, we were discussing if that would come out of the reserves, the carryover. Yeah, boarding right now. Sheriff uh, from the yeah. jail reserve. What about the one million, one to two million on mobile software? So that. That's just the total price of the, price of the uh, particular software that we're looking at right now. So that's total software and implementation and everything. So like I explained, it could come from, you know, some of that's going to come from existing funds within the 911 uh, fund that we have. Um, some could come from other agencies. Um, if we end up being a host agency, there could be some possibility for Senate appropriation funds as well, uh, because they're, they're funding like using the word consolidation, but it, the combining of resources. So like if we have, you know, surrounding counties that then um, participate in the same uh, software as us, that would be a cost savings for everyone. And then, so there, uh, St. Louis County is actually going through that process right now. And I believe they I were guess, awarded I guess my bottom line question is that, do we have everything in, and I know this is a draft, but it's everything in the 8.5% proposed. Okay. So if this is part of the levy, then it's already included in that 8.5. Well, if it is. This would come from existing other funding sources. As well as the levy. So otherwise, it's, it's about what? 1% increase in the levy, but it's not going to be totally one, the 439,000. So in other words, that's, that's why I, I just want to know where the money's going to oh, sure. come from. So it's, it, I'm not saying uh, what you requested and what's what you got down. You need I, so just how it's all going to work. Yeah, I, I you know I may have misunderstood too my role here, but I'm just uh, pointing out some of the highlights sure. that may happen. That's good. Yeah. So the 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 software it may not even happen in 2025. We may stick right. with LHGJ through that year. Oh, um, the uh, um, yeah. And then the and the canine that's that's money we already have. Okay. And so, if the software happens, I think I'm understanding it now. It, then it would come out of um, either grants or reserves. It wouldn't correct. it wouldn't add to the general fund? Correct. Where right. Sheriff Tolson was kind of coming in at with the slide, and maybe I missed it from the beginning. Was part of the um, the directive I gave to department heads is what's planning. Even if it's not 2025 planning, what's upcoming? And so this pro process might start in 2025, but it might not be implemented until 2026. So this is not included in the budget. So that 8.5% is everything that's included in your IFS. So that's a little bit, I can, I can explain more. 
Um, but some of the stuff on this slide, like that medical secretary and always been having conversations with Connie and I regarding, you know, maybe that comes from the carryover dollars from our reserves because it's a part-time position. There would be no benefits. So let's maybe look at this more creatively. Um, and really this is needed because of, you know, our ICE contract and all of the documentation that they're needed, um, they need to do right now. It's, it's a lot of work for correctional officers. And well, they are already worked very hard with the amount of um, individuals we have in our county jail. And so, and like he said, the, the canine, we already have those funds. So these are just kind of upcoming things that are we're looking at moving forward as well. So when he comes back and maybe does request to, to utilize reserves or something on um, to update the board on this, this is, you would have had a heads up on this one. So the medical secretary will happen in 2025? We're hoping because it is needed and it's causing a lot of distress. With but it's members. not in the 8.5%. Correct, because it wouldn't be. Okay. I really feel strongly yet <laughs> that any salary increases or position be put on the levy and not come out of reserves because then next year we're going to have to put it on the levy in addition to the increase over that year. So I'm fine, if, but then we should be in the, in the levy. So if that's the need there for, for those positions, let's do it. But let's put it on the levy instead of taking our reserves. And, and we're just levy, kicking them. So yeah, my Go question, ahead. Mr. Chair, would it, would it be, are you talking the jail, the reserves from the jail or? Okay, so that's, that's income. So it's kind of like, you know, paying for. That position. Yeah, it's not coming out of general fund reserves. It's it's just coming out of what excess the jail has. So yeah. the jail is basically for the paying. medical secretary as well. But but that position, oh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Chair, it's, it's it may be paying for that position for that year, but you're going to have to put that on the levy sooner or later, and you have to make that up. Am I am I correct on in that, Karen? Well, right now the jail is carrying um, a healthy reserve. It would. It would pay those salaries for quite some time. Well, there's now, if the ICE contract were to change in the near future, that's going to change prices um, are. But, and I think nobody's questioning the need. No, it's it's just what, how we do it. Yeah. What bank we we take? What fund we take it out of? Because sure. uh, when we approve this levy after a while, whatever percent it ends up being, um, is that one twenty five for the secretary coming? Being added to that, or is it come out of your fund? And I think I heard the answer. And those are really small details in the grand scheme of things. One percent is three hundred fifty thousand. I mean, those are things that Karen and I administer. But three of those it makes gives you another percent. I don't. But those are things that Eric and I have had conversations. If we would add a correctional officer, if the medical secretary, would it be needed if something were to happen with that ICE contract? I mean, those are things we have right. been discussing. Right. This is just Eric's department. If you get thirty thousand and Another department, you add them all up, and pretty soon you've got another percent on the on the budget. Deal, Eric. If if that dispatching part of it, if that breaks, are you like in trouble, or do you got some way to keep it going? I guess that's my. If it's something that's gonna break and it's gonna be broke, then I know that's a lot of money, but you need that. Yeah, I I know what you're saying. It was kind of a fear early on, um, but uh, no, it's it's a company that's been, so the reason we got it for such a good price many years ago was because we were one of the first people that bought into it. They were they were like a startup and they gave us a really good deal. I think right around 250,000, we paid for that entire system. Um, but, you know, I, as things happen, as companies change hands and, and whatnot, right. then, you know, they, they sort of, you know how with technology, they, they sort of just make things become outdated intentionally. So the company that currently owns what we're using offers another product sure. and they, they, they want to push you to that, you know? So, I mean, the support is still there. The company still exists. Okay. It's not like they, but you know, the, the, the scramble or the, the panic that we experienced a little over a year ago, a little over a year ago was I think just a rumor amongst probably these companies, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was kind of a mess. So Ms. Mr. Chair, <laughs> yeah. So at, at my emergency services board, we had, we had a big conversation about this. A lot of these uh, providers, they 
they kind of got you because when they first sell it to you, they go got support, but then after about five years, they go, yeah, we're not not going to support yeah. this here anymore, but we have a new one here, <laughs> and so that's where they they kind of get everybody, and everybody goes like, what, what, how can we do, what can we do about this? And there really isn't. You, you're kind of stuck. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we didn't. There were some counties that jumped onto something really quick. Um, and I'm glad we didn't because now we have the advantage of being able to sit back and, and look at this product that we're really interested in that is currently being put uh, to work or to put to use in Stearns County and uh, to see how it goes for them. And, uh, and especially that part where, where Benton is actually is, is uh, going to be participating as a user within. So Stearns has already got Benton County on board. And it's it's kind of neat. So. I'm glad we're able to to see that to let that them uh, kind of blaze the trail or what so to speak. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Sheriff. All right. I'm free to go. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Veteran Services. I don't see Trish here, so I assume Administrator Baker is going to handle this one. Trish was unable to be here, so I'll just do a, a quick recap. Um, information on the slide what we're trying to do within the veteran services officer or veteran service office um, we did increase the per diems for the advisory council members that's been talked about and so that was added in the budget um, we're planning multiple veterans events throughout the county but those events are paid for through the grant that we get through the state which we get that ten thousand dollars trish was just here to approve that contract so that's what um, pays for the majority of those outings and some of that is in kind or um, different free events and things like that throughout the community. Um, and then we're working with St. Cloud Stand Down and bringing food to veterans um, who are struggling financially um, or have uh, personal burdens, things like that to deliver uh, five to 10 boxes a week. So they're narrowing down um, some of those veterans that would be able to be able to have that service. One thing we're also working on is providing a timely newsletter with the information that we're working on um, and then some sort of mass communication so we can send out a text where all veterans that sign up receive the same information, a reminder if there's an event, a reminder for the advisory council, different things like that. And so we are working, um, we're working with Melissa actually on a software that's been utilized in our emergency management and then we'll eventually be working with Scott to see if there's other solutions that we're able to use. So that's a wrap up for all the department heads. Reasoning why, and I think I said this a lot before, was the reasoning why I had departments head come, department head, heads come and present is because this is an increase in the levy, I wanted you to hear not just from me um, because of the raise uh, increase in the levy, I wanted you to hear it from them that these are the needs that I hear from them on determining whether or not it's approved or denied in the overall budget. And so one thing I, I think we'll start doing this maybe every other year, not every year we need to do this presentation. Like I said before, some counties do it, some counties don't. Um, but I think it's truly important to hear from all county departments and for you to hear from them because that's what I'm hearing when I present to you the final levy. So moving forward, the wages. So this is something I also included at the TNT meeting as well. Um, so included is the full-time wages for 2025, 2026, and 2027. That's just a look ahead on what we're seeing. So this does include um, the steps in COLA. And um, this also fluctuates, um, like Shane said, Sometimes when you have someone retire and they're at the top, the top of the scale and you have you bring someone in and they're at a step one or two, that makes a huge difference. If somebody's coming in and taking our insurance, things like that, health insurance plays a role in all of that. And so um, this is always a moving target, but th this is the best guesstimate that we have for 26 and 27. And to note, 26 would be the end of our three-year contracts. Uh, and so 27 would be a new contract. And I don't um, I think the staff have really appreciated the wage increase and the, the re-look at the, the insurance and the benefits. And in conversations, you know, Connie and I have already talked, Connie won't be here. Um, for going into 27, I don't feel that we'll need to re-look at our wage. We might modify our wage scale and maybe re-look at the percentage in between steps, how many people are at a step 10, and kind of reevaluate that. But I don't foresee coming to the board and asking for an increase. 
Um, cause I, I, I got a question. Karen, do you have the 2024 numbers for, for those, um, even if you had the total? I do not have those with me. Okay. I could get those though and send. Okay, and then um, this does not include, I think this year, if I understand right now, this year, I understand we still have the uh, we still have the health reserve, health health insurance reserve, but I don't see health insurance or is that in here somewhere on the we don't 25, have, 26, 27? Nope. So we don't have our final health insurance numbers for 25. And so that's something that we um, we received numbers this morning. I'll, I'll get into that. Um, but if you give me one second, I'll have... And if you get, if you could do the total, that's that's good total enough. Life. Of full time wages, part time wages, overtime wages, FICA and PEM. You received that in the T and T presentation. Yeah. Do you have them in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Twenty twenty four was thirty six nine eighty seven three hundred, and that was all included in the. T and T presentation from twenty. Yeah, would you repeat that again? Thirty six. Um, for twenty twenty four, full time yes. wages were thirty four million nine hundred eighty seven thousand three hundred. Part time wages we estimated at three hundred ninety six thousand. OT wages we estimated at four hundred forty five thousand five hundred. FICA para we estimated at five million five hundred seventy seven thousand three hundred, totaling forty one million four hundred. That's the number I'm looking at. Forty-one million. You talk fast. Forty-one million four hundred six thousand one hundred. Okay, thank you. Yep. And so, go. There's a lot of moving parts right now. Um, I was at my regional meeting that we host here in Wilmer a couple of weeks ago, and I was asking other counties where they're at and on the preliminary levy. And they were like, "Oh my gosh, we're not even close yet, Kelsey. Where are you?" You're really ahead of the game. And so there's a lot of moving parts from today until September 16th now. And that's where today really is the budget work session. How I look at this is really the guidance and direction from you not to get in the weeds. That's my job to do that work is really the guidance. to when I get to the September 16th, that we can approve that you can approve that levy. September 3rd, I'll pro provide an update to the board on where we're coming in at. So we're still kind of fine tuning things. Um, that's typically how this work session should work then is, um, you know, gathering that information, looking for guidance from the board. The next slide would be the quasi government requests that come into the county. Um, you can see there's a, an additional column it says requested 2025. Those are all the amounts that have been requested and the total at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you see the last column there is recommended 2025. These are the recommendations that I have put in. How do you reach, how do you arrive at those recommendations? I base it off the levy. So well, however, up, however what's requested for the 2025 that's in that 8.5% levy. So when I say that 8.5%, don't take that to heart because if you were to look at me and nod, say, Kelsey, go with that recommended, that amount, that already lowers the levy in the, on the quasi-government. I'm sorry, I'm a little confused on that. Yeah. You're, which one you're talking about would lower so the levy? If you were to look at the requested 2025? Yeah. Those are all in the IFS budget that got us to that 8.5% levy. Mm -hmm. Right. But if I were to put in the recommended, that already lowers that 8.5% levy. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah. And so, but, but so yeah, so the the, the requested is the 8.5. No. One point. No. You're, you're requested yet one or, or the, I'm talking about the total uh, recommendation for the levy. Uh, it's not really a recommendation or I mean, well, this is where it would be at if we accepted it today, right? Yep. If we accepted the recommend, your recommended instead of the request. No, the request. No, the request. Yeah, so I'm saying. 
Yeah, okay, and I'm okay with that. And I think it's right on. All right. And so these are, you know, I, I lowered, so like SWCE, they requested that 536. 536,000, I lowered that to 350,000. Now this doesn't, I, I wanna really preface, this doesn't mean I don't support the SWCD and support the water initiatives. This is an order if the board at the end of this work session says, Kelsey, I really would like you to get in, get the levy to a six, to a six, seven and a half percent. Then that is what I'm gonna look at to cut. Yeah. Um, and so that's where, um, some of my recommendations, there is some areas of improvement. And so if we wanted to use one-time exception funds like reserves, things like that, what we did with SWCD this for 2024, we approved their request at 285,800, but then the board approved to pull $300,000 from the building fund reserves for their new building. And so there are there is some wiggle room when I say if we couldn't approve the the entire, if you wouldn't want to approve the entire requested amount. Mr. Chair, thank you. So with, with the soil and water request for the 536, what is all that for then? Wages. Right, it's for all for wages, water, exactly. Okay, so this would be an ongoing request. I mean, or, or that, it's in the, it could be built in the levy for, so each year, then if we did the full amount. I think Typically, their requests don't go down, but in this instance, there it could go down. I, you know, that's really up to that operating board. Like, if you can see CCT in 2024 requested 20,500, mm -hmm. and in 2025, they requested 20,000. So, it's not typical that you're going to see a, a quasi government entity go down in their request. Um, but because of the jump from with SWCD from 285 to 536, you might see that go back down or kind of even out a little bit. But I, I'm not sure on that. So, because I, I, I may misunderstand this, but is some of the requests including uh, matches, local matches? That we from have? SWCD. Yeah. Not from the, these are straight county levy requests. But I mean, are they used for? Match so if there's less projects in another year, it can go down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there is a. I'm just going to throw this out here. There is a way to meet that without using levy dollars, and that's those excess ditch funds that that are they qualify for, for buffer water things. Yeah. So in that account, it still continues to build even with the what they're taking out. So we could. You know what's going to get lost? The first one taken off the list. Is because it was the last one on. So, and those are things absolutely that I can look at, and we can we could utilize the riparian eight dollars, and um, I could still keep it at the three hundred fifty thousand, and we could use the the buffer dollars to offset that cost to get it up to that five. I mean the five thirties. No, so let's say I would use levy use county levy dollars at that. Oh point. yes, 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 got it. Yep. Yeah, so then we would use the repairing aid to like offset that difference, right? I think it's something we should consider. Yep. I, I go ahead. Oh, I, I actually I think this is a year that that we could go eight point five. I know it's a big jump, but I think we, looking back historically, we've done so well, and this is kind of an adjustment, and and yet moving forward with some. Um, some positive things taking place and meeting the needs out there. So I'm com comfortable with what you what's there at eight point five. Without digging into it more, I might have more questions. Like you said, it's going to change, but I well, I, I I see. I yeah, can't. and there's a couple things though. If we go to the next slide for the 2025 proposed levy, that you know the okay. listed gross levy that we're at that we're at. That's right where now. I'm at. Yeah. Yep, that 48 million, the 2025 CPA. Yep. County program aid. And our 2024 net levy was that 38 million. And so that jump right now is that 10 right there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had this slide too, and I think this is a really just transparent, basic sixth grade math level, like telling how we get there. And so after CPA, we, you know, we minus that off, we get to that 45 million. So the landfill cell construction, which Gary talked about in the heavy equipment purchase, that um, combined was 3.6 million. And so I have taken that out of the reserves 
And so when we get to our, that's how we get to that 8.5%. I'm not including the landfill self-construction project within that 8.5% preliminary level. Because it's a wash with the reserve. Yep. Right. And it's a one. Absolute, and it's a one-time yep. expense. Perfect. And so that has been done in the past. And so that's why we went with that 8.5. To me, oh. that's a proper use of reserves. Yeah. Yep. Right. Especially yeah, for that's yeah. Um. And so the levy history, and this is, I kind of have gone over this in the past too. And so we've really kept it under a 5%. So I appreciate your comment, Corky, regarding that 8.5%. Um, but some next steps are, um, thank you to all the staff, all the department heads. We, I mean, I think I've been working on this budget longer than any other administrator in the state of Minnesota, I feel like. Um, and the staff, we talk about this almost at every monthly, if unless we've had to cancel a department head meeting, we talk about the budget. Um, and so it's really the direction from the county board, where's that sweet spot that the board is looking for? Are you comfortable with that 8%? Because there's still some moving parts, like I said. Health insurance, it's a 50-50 split. So the employer and employee, it's that 50-50 split. We put in for a 20%. Um, we had... Uh, Connie and Lisa were on a call this morning with a finalized number or their, their proposal, um, but I wanna wait to talk with them, but that's a lot lower than that 20%. So we could probably see a good 300,000 come out of the budget right there. That quasi-governmental- Come out of the budget or, or be out, added to it? Come out of the budget. And so um, the quasi-government, if I put in that recommended, we use some of the riparian need, that's probably another 160,000, give or take. So right there is almost a percent and a half. So, and then if we were to use any of the reserves, and I don't, if we go with that higher levy, we shouldn't have to use, if the board is okay with going with the higher levy, we honestly shouldn't have to use any of our reserves to uh, for the preliminary levy. And I, I guess for me, I feel comfortable um, going with that because then that gets us from where we should have been for 24 moving forward going into 25 for 26 and 27 it, le it levels out that levy um, <clears throat> so the reason I asked that about the 2024 and this does not include insurance I think last year Karen was like three quarters of a million dollars that we used out of reserves to cover the health and health benefits Maybe even eight hundred fifty thousand. Maybe six hundred. But there's all that. That's a finite. Seven hundred forty-seven thousand. Yeah, there's a finite account uh, amount there. So at one point, that probably has to get added in here. No, I don't think we have. I don't think this year we'll have to use our health. No, not this year, but but in twenty twenty six and twenty twenty seven. So without the insurance, in there, and I'll get to my point in a minute. I did a calculation from twenty twenty four, our current year. So next year, just because of wages, part-time, overtime, that whole package, we go up 5.2%. Mm -hmm. Following year is 5.2% as it's proposed here. The following year after that is 6.3. So I think it's 100% reason that we're at 8.2 because, or whatever, because there's other inflation involved besides wage inflation. You know, the cost of fuel can go up. The cost of pencils can go up, and so if you just if you took the wage inflation, if you will, and took general inflation, you're probably at that eight percent. And I know people are saying, "I get it," because we're paying more at the store for salaries, and McDonald's is paying more, and so they get it when you have to pay wages, and most of our cost is wages. And I absolutely, and that's very typical. When it comes to any business, I just have, uh, yeah. So I, you know, this is a big concern for me too. It, you know, it, it's hard because farmers, you know, they their income is going down when we're going to be going up. But I talked to a county commissioner. I can't remember which conference it was we were at, and he'd been a commissioner for close to thirty years. And he said, "You have to go." He said, "Your budget almost has to follow inflation," or he said, "You get in trouble if you don't." And and, and it happens really quick, he said, and it's hard to dig out of that. So I don't like that it's eight and a half, <laughs> but I, I understand it. You know, I say this sum up we, we have to be, yeah, I'm saying it. I'm the only one here up for election that is, but, but, you know, I, but I, I, I get it. But yeah. at the same time, you know, as a, 
you know, landowner, it, it's hard to stomach it, but, but I, you, we're stuck. I mean, you have inflation and that factors into it big. And if you look at our history, we've, we've been pretty good. Well, and, and actually probably, Mr. Chair, uh, we've been pretty good because I, other counties the last couple of years, they've all been almost, I mm -hmm. know, many were a lot higher on their levy than we were. The and, cities. Yeah, oh, in the cities, and yes. You know, uh, a county commissioner once told me that it's, you shouldn't always pride yourself on having a low levy. Yep. And sometimes that's hard to wrap your head around. That's hard to tell your constituents. Um, and that's hard coming into a county that's always consistently had a low levy. Mm -hmm. And here I am disrupting every apple cart there is. But I think the work that we're doing also shows it. And I think one thing I wanted to end on when you go back to the beginning slide is the planning. And I think I really credit the staff to this work. We're not only just planning what we're doing with our roads, which seems to get a lot of airtime, but we're also gonna be looking at strategic planning with the board. What is the vision? What are the goals for the county? We're planning, Caroline's doing a phenomenal job looking at our staffing and our technology and how do we better serve our clients and our constituents? Um, how do we better serve with technology? And that all kind of encompasses that planning. And not that we haven't done a good job, and I, we have done a good job, but we want to continue to do a good job with that. And so I think to 20, for 2025, if we can really dig in and get some planning done to set us up for 26 and set us up for 27, you all will be aware of what is coming down the pipe for a budgetary request. And so... I'll end it at that. I think I have a good gauge on the eight and a half percent. The the one comment I have that I don't know if that'll be the preliminary because we'll I'll kind of fine tune some numbers. I'm not going to just cushion it just to cushion it, um, but we'll fine tune some numbers in between now and September third. At the September third meeting, I will provide just a short update of where we're at um, with the levy, and then at that September sixteenth, I'll come with a resolution on the final preliminary levy. So there are some more questions. Jill, well, I guess, it, and I'm just going to be the devil's advocate here because I talked to somebody, and I won't say what county it was this weekend, and they're going to come in at 12%. So my question is, I know it's high, but is it high enough? To start as a preliminary, is it high enough? I mean, you have to ask the question, even though we don't want to even yeah, think you about didn't, it. You didn't say that with all the departments. <laughs> no, they would all be like, but that's not enough. Write that down. <laughs> Caroline said it best when there's always, she said it best, there's always needs and desires for more staffing, right? Right. But we have to be steward. Right. Financial well, and like I said, I'm just, I'm just saying it because it needs to be asked. I'm not saying I want to do it either, but I'm just... I think that's where we're looking at the planning. I will be honest in the in Department 880. I know if it, um, Shane, Tammy, Joe, some departments added training dollars within mm -hmm. their budget. I did add dollars within the 880, which is kind of the um, depart the commissioner's budget. I would call it under professional services. I cush I shouldn't say cushion, but I added dollars in there for training, not only just training, but also strategic planning. If we have public committee events. Um, and so I don't always like to cushion the budget on that because we have such a large budget. Um, and I would, to be honest, I don't know if there is a lot of cushion. These, we've really fine tuned on where we code things in line items, where we're pulling it out of, who's paying for what um, sort of thing. So we've really fine tuned that. And that has been set up by my predecessor as well. And I don't know, other than one other Western County that is this well with, you know, financial reserves. So kudos to Larry for doing that. For me to come in as a new administrator, that's really healthy um, to come in with really healthy reserves to work off budgets in this time. Yeah, so going back on like soil and water, are we going to, is there a consensus that we can take out of that buffer strip money to help meet their goals so that they can access, you know, funds. I mean, they, they have a lot of projects they want to do. 
and there's a lot of money available if they can. I think I have the consensus now. That would still all be approved at the September 16th. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. The, the budget so when we do that, time. then I'll explain. Okay. You'll see that in the budget. Okay. I'll have this. I'll um, have the budget okay. presentation numbers uh, okay. in the board packet. All right. Great. Thank you. So I got a question. My last question. Um, you, your budget and the commissioner's budget is down by about 8% or something like that. How will that affect what we're, is that because we're going to take a pay cut? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Your wages are up to you. So we haven't added right. that in there. I get that. So your, your department will increase depending on what you do for your oh, wages. Um, we don't do that until, <laughs> until December. Um, but how, how does, how do you, you know, what's that 35000 Has that been over budgeted over the years? Is that why you're able to... Uh, For the commissioners? Yeah. And yours. You're down fourteen. you You're down 14000 too. You didn't know that? Wages. Yeah. But I, but Mr. Chair, I, my feeling is yeah, it's a budget. We'll go with it. You know, both of our budgets, we do what we have to do. If some training comes up and we meet, meet the max, we'll still probably find a way to do it. You know, so it's, I think we're okay. No, I, I, I mean, it, 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 I'm it, just curious as to where, from, we're from do. 24 to 25, how it could go down in, in our case, 35,000, in your case, 14,000, and maintain what we've been doing is either for our wages or our, because our, our travel and our, our, uh, all policy and all that stuff comes out of there too, right? For you guys, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So are we going to be able to it's cover all that? Over. Yeah. Or was it? You're typically a little over on your travel. Okay. Um, so, but you're really, I think, I don't have so where I just, Why wouldn't we increase it a little bit rather than decrease it to make sure that so we don't go over? Well, it, it could be a one time thing, one time year thing, and we, we take out reserves and we do it. We typically don't do that. I mean, it's really not all five overspend. always go. Um, Got to come out of reserve. If they have an idea of what you supply your wages or to go up, we can certainly put that in the budget. Yeah. Well, they're not going to change much, I would think. Not like Hennepin County wants to. <laughs> <laughs> but what I've seen is that. But yeah, I mean, if you're thinking percent, five percent, right? But if we've been using pretty much what's been budgeted from twenty three to twenty four to twenty five, wouldn't you go to say three percent to it, just like we did for the employees, and and call that the number rather than you know go down thirty five. Well, that didn't, last year you didn't take a right. increase, correct? That didn't right. make $35,000 difference for, for this year. Right. right. But we can put something in for twenty five. But that won't erase that whole 35000 what? Even a 3% increase. Yeah. Maybe when you add PERA and all that stuff, too. I, have well, to. I, I don't think I have a budget breaker, and I just think we should leave it and vote on it. It's not I'm not supporting the wage increase. No, yeah. we can't yeah. do this. No. No. I, uh, what? I, but that's it. Yeah. That's all I have for the budget work Very session. Good. Thank you for your time. Um, longer than 90 minutes, but we'll get the hang of this. You know, we're not going to do the department head every year, but I think um, that's all I have. Yeah, and that was okay. And if we want if any more questions, sure. we could probably ask you or Karen if we have a detail. But we're not done talking. We're done talking. Okay. Okay. And then we will adjourn. Holy shit, I gotta get shoot on the way. It hurt. Is this gonna be on YouTube too?